want to get some reaction to Burry's comments from two guests who spend their days analyzing the housing market. Demir Jokai is a home building analyst with Majestic Research. He's here in studio. Meanwhile, Michael Carliner is an independent housing consultant, a research affiliate at the Harvard University Joint Center for Housing Studies, and a former economist at the National Association of Home Builders. Thanks to both of you. Uh, Michael, we might as well start with you. Uh, Burry talked about home homes that people are living in uh, but uh, are not paying for and and nothing's ha happening no ramifications yet uh, you've done some research that tells you very similar things right well I, I go beyond that and say many of those homes where the mortgages aren't being paid <clears throat> is not that there's somebody living there and not paying the mortgage there's nobody living there but the owner isn't paying the mortgage and we have a huge number of vacant homes and we'll tell you, you know, that uh, that I think is the most fundamental problem that uh, means that we can't just solve this by, by changing, putting in a tax credit or whatever. Yeah, uh, Demir, uh, Burry calls this an artificial housing market right now. Yeah. You would agree? Well, I mean, he makes a really good point. In theory, it's completely true. Um, you know, he makes the point that Fannie and Freddie are essentially sopping up this excess demand that otherwise if it came into the market would essentially push the prices down uh, you know he said I think he went on to say that he'd like to see that um, stop I think yes. that's not really likely to happen Fannie and Freddie are going to continue to carry this excess until the market is healthy enough to stop it up and that's going to be quite some time Michael what do you think how, how long could it be if ever that Fannie and Freddie are no longer playing in the mortgage market well I don't know if they would disappear entirely I think it's not healthy that they're playing as larger role as they are, but when we had federal institutions come in to take this role in the 1930s, uh, you know, it's the, by in the 1950s they were still accounting for, for nearly all mortgages, and so it could be quite a long time. Demir, if we are uh, stalling an, ine an inevitable decline in home prices, and obviously every part of the country is different, what kinds of price declines are we talking about on top of what we've already seen? I mean, I think we've seen the bulk of it. You know, we could see a double dip, but be, I think it would really be a double dip in name only. Um, you know, we're starting to see in our real-time data that the prices, forward-looking asking prices on existing homes are coming down, but you would expect that seasonally. So, yeah, in 2011, we could see a, a housing dip, but we're much closer to the bottom than, than we are to the top. I, I think at this point, the question is, what's the trajectory at which they gain? Because when you think about it, if we've got all of this inventory, that Fannie's holding, if we got all this inventory that supposedly banks are holding and then homeowners want to sell too that are stuck in their homes, every couple basis points of price improvement, you're going to see a commensurate amount of volume come in and just keep pushing it down. So every time we come up, we're just going to keep getting pushed down and it's going to be like that until we can clear out this existing product. Michael, for the average investor, this seems a little confusing. I mean, it's obvious that the housing market is struggling right now, but then we'll get these monthly numbers on the housing picture. and. In certain markets, you're seeing positive percentage increases. So, so what do you make of this? Well, the first of all, there aren't very many markets who are seeing positive percentage increases. Uh, uh, it's very hard to find a market that's really strong. The, you know, there's a little bit of an increase in a couple of places like Minneapolis, but uh, uh, most numbers are weak, and most numbers are going to look worse. Uh, as a result of the ending of the tax credit, which hasn't really shown up the numbers yet in terms of the uh, uh, houses closing. So I think we'll probably see a, a, a drop in prices. I think the tax credits mostly accrued to home sellers rather than home buyers. And so without that uh, additional uh, uh, incentive for the buyer, we're probably going to have some effect on prices in the short term. Demir, very quickly, you cover the home building space. Michael Burry, when he was first scratching his head about what could come in housing about a decade ago, was looking at home building companies, why they could make so much money. Yeah. And that led him to this. The home building model today is drastically different. Michael Carliner was talking about tax credits. The home builders don't want them anymore. Yeah, I think there's a general recognition, not just among home builders, but among economists, that you know, the, a tax credit, any kind of pricing and incentives, it, does, it is effective in moving demand around, but if you essentially straight line it through, it's really not going to generate any new genuine organic demand. And what the builders really need right now is organic demand, and unfortunately for them, that's not something that can be manufactured. I mean, I, I know that Michael's done some work on headship rates. I'd be interested to hear his perspective because at this point, the way we're looking at it, we just brought people into the market who didn't belong, and we allowed the people who were in the market to refinance at rates that had no relationship to the traditional drivers of housing prices. Michael? 
Well, yeah, I, mean, I think you know, there's no easy way to create more. We, we, well, there's an easy way to let more immigration in, uh, but uh, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. And in fact, uh, one of the reasons why I think demand has been so weak is because we had a lot of people that didn't come or that left. And they weren't all illegal immigrants. There were a lot of uh, you know, highly skilled, relatively well-paid people that either didn't come or that left. Uh, so that was one of the contributions to the, the slowdown in household formations. We also have some doubling up. But in, in any event, uh, I don't see that turning around quickly. I know, you know, even you know, low mortgage rates don't create more households. Very quick last word, Demir. Yeah, I think at this point, you, you know, home builders are going to try to grow into an environment where you've just got too much excess inventory. Michael Burry was saying it. It's just going to keep coming in. Home builders have to grow to service their debt, but at this point, they're really going to be growing with a headwind. All right, Demir Jokai and Michael Carlin are joining us for reaction to our interview with Michael Burry. Thanks again to both of you.